Hi, I'm Moon Harrison with Arlington Independent Media, and we're here today at George C. Marshall High School for the 2016 Conference 13 Theater Festival. With us today, some of the cast members from the show This Is It from Falls Church High School. I'm here with my colleague, Steve Gabala. Hi, I'm Steve, and uh, we are joined here today by Trisha Nguyen, Claire Joseph, uh, Dolgan Mugmerserin, and Maddie Rummengen. And uh, I think that we'll begin. Uh, Claire, I believe, has volunteered just to give us a, a quick description so everyone uh, understands uh, what this show was about. So this play follows the storyline of four high school students and their struggles with popular, not popular, um, with common issues that people struggle with nowadays. And the characters are Chloe, played by Maddie, Samantha, played by Dolgan, Alexis, played by Trisha, and Erica, played by Mac our friend Mackenzie, who is not here. And um, they all have like intertwining stories because they all go to the same school. And they all come to the counselor to tell, because I'm trying to counsel them to help them through with their problems but I'm not a very good counselor, and it's just them struggling with these internal, con internal and external conflicts. They turn to their friends a lot for help, but sometimes it doesn't really help because the other friend doesn't understand what they're going through. Yeah. So, yeah. conflict. <laughs> yeah. No, this, this was a very uh, uh, deep show. There was a lot of mm -hmm. serious issues being tackled. Um, and I understand that it was also uh, student-written and mm -hmm. student-directed. Um, I don't know if anyone, you know, is willing to describe what that creative experience was like working with a student-written show and, and how that was different maybe from working with uh, some of the other shows you've done. Um, I can talk about yeah. that. Sure. Um, well, at the beginning of the school year, we all had to write our own monologues about some frustrations or some things that we were dealing with at home. And at first it was really difficult and we were all really confused and we didn't know what to do with that. It just kind of happened. And our director, Keeley, um, kind of fused them all together and made it the way it is. So everyone in the show has a different part that they helped write, and she just incorporated all the stories together. So it just mm -hmm. works as one fluid show. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, a really, that's a really interesting process. Yeah. What is it like when you're on stage kind of talking about something so real does that help or does that kind of is that a little make it a little challenging i think it gives us more true emotions and like emotions that we can really use on stage and it helps the audience really see our feelings yeah because i'm sure all of us have gone through something that can relate Related into to, yeah. this play and so like seeing like even if you're not the character to show that emotion you're able to understand when they're trying to work through a scene, you're just like, oh, okay, I, I get it. Like, this is something I can see, and this may be something that the audience can relate to. We were hoping to get, like, an, a good audience reaction. They're like, oh, I, I, can, I can relate to that. Yeah. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah. So would you say that you um, enjoyed doing this more than, than other your, the other roles that you've had, or did it make it harder to do then? I think it was both because um, <laughs> we also got a lot more creative say because it wasn't too much we could change the script so we took this to another competition earlier this year okay. and the script is completely different we changed it we added um, a lot of different scenes more conflict in between these two shows so we have the ability to change it which really helps but also puts a lot of stress on us because we have to memorize more <laughs> different lines and it's a different kind of character and like we all have to agree yeah, yeah. yeah. what we want to change like, like, I know your character changed a lot during yeah, the two yeah, processes. We, usually for the other, when we first started out, the first piece, um, it was, none of the characters really had that much background information on them. And so the characters weren't as deep as they were when we performed it today. So, yeah, yeah we, we added a lot more depth to our characters, and that really helped with pushing the show. Yeah. I have a question involving that, your, your depth of characters. The blocking of the show, there was minimal movement like you had most of the interactions with the other actors mm -hmm. but there was so much that was going on when you guys were on stage maybe you had the focus maybe you didn't but there was minimal movement sometimes as an actor it's actually harder not to move and to fidget mm -hmm. and whatnot and have all their when you you when there's not specifically business to do what was that like being on stage embodying your character 
maybe not having the focus, or when you did have the focus when you were doing a monologue and you're just creating a world, minimal set piece, creating a world, speaking really to the audience. What was that like? It was, it was pretty hard because we're just standing there and it's such a big stage and like you're just, you just try to really fill up the whole stage with your emotions and what you're saying. Because like if you're just moving for no reason, it kind of takes the focus out of what you're saying. So if what you're saying is very important and very deep, like most of the monologues, I think move, no moving is, is pretty good. The very beginning where we had the, the counselor in the middle and the four students behind her, we wanted to show that um, like all of us are going, like we're here to see the same person, but all of us like have such different issues and we wanted to show like how the counselor React and she was like, she was like, not, mm. not very Robotic. good <laughs> yeah. counselor, but she had to listen to everyone's um, conflict. Yeah. yeah. And it was, um, I like, I think it was hard for Claire. It was a weird she experience. Had to <laughs> talk, like, she had to have like four different emotions for the four of us because all of us are very different characters. Yeah. So good job with that. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Even though the counselor was my yeah. favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, good job to, to all of you. Um, Thank you. What I wanted to ask then is, uh, what's the rehearsal process for this like? How much time oh. goes in oh my. to creating oh. the show? Yeah, that, that, that you know that the viewers don't always see. We actually had to make a few changes right before, but we with what we had, yeah. I think we did pretty. I think we did really well. Yeah. yeah, with the amount of preparation time we had. Yeah, our teacher wanted us to start out as a more of a devised theater piece, which is like a bunch of different things like intertwining together, and it's more of an improv, and. To begin with, our show wasn't really that. We were going by a script, but because of the, the last-minute changes we kind of had to make, we made it more a devised piece, and our teacher really liked that, which is very satisfying for us to get something that um, what we were trying to aim towards but actually got there. So, In your training, in, your, in, your, in the rehearsal process, is there a big differentiation between how you practice an improvisation versus how you practice more of a scripted speed piece? Well, with a scripted piece, we obviously like know what to do. Like in my mind, I know this is what I'm supposed to say. This is the blocking that I know. But with improv, you just kind of let your mind flow and your creativity on the stage. So that was <laughs> once you get a script though, and the teach like someone else tells you to start to improv off of that script. It's kind of it's really hard because I we um, we try to yeah. improv from the script and it was a really hard, a lot harder than I thought because like you have the script in your mind but you're also supposed to be doing something else so you're just like going back to the script but you're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah. You're like playing the same scene but like not, not. really. Yeah. And also improv kind of gives you more uh, emotional feel because you're more pulling from your own experiences yeah, yeah. than your characters. Like we can relate to our characters a little bit at least and we kind of know what they're going through. So being able to improv kind of brings your, your emotions from your life into the characters. Interesting, wow. Do you have questions? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Well, so I, I was just going to ask, I was thinking back to, um, Trisha had said, you know, Claire, that the counselor's character, that the counselor uh, wasn't doing a very good job. Yeah. And I was just wondering, um, you know, what your take on that character is. Uh, yeah, I kind of felt the same way. She's not the best counselor. I I feel like she like came <laughs> right out of like college, and this is more of like her first like main that job child. job that she's like had, and she's tr really trying to help, but she doesn't really know how because she's just coming kind of coming like directly from her textbooks or her teachers. That's why it kind of sounds really really scripted what she's saying because she doesn't necessarily know what she's doing. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's great that you have that, uh, that background in mind and, and, and where the character is coming from and why. Um, and so for the rest of you, um, do you feel like your characters are, um, are they good friends? Are they uh, friends who are, uh, you know, helping each other out or what I do you think? Like with me, Samantha and Chloe, um, Samantha is a very rude person. Um, she's like the mean girl kind of thing, mm. and her, like, kind of only her friend, her only friend is Chloe, but she really does care about Chloe, but it, there's kind of a miscommunication. They don't really say how they're feeling, so Samantha doesn't know what Chloe
Chloe's going through and she doesn't know what I'm going through. So we're just kind of like friends, like on the surface kind of. So we just party together and do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not very like deep. There's no like deep connections or anything. So she does care about her and in the end it shows, but she just didn't really know anything that was going on with Chloe. Yeah, it's the same with like Erica and Alexis, I would say, because they're close friends and Alexis knows that Erica has her own like deep um, problems, but she doesn't really know how to execute the her words when she tries to speak to Erica and try to help her. So she often gets, just gets really frustrated at Erica for just like stressing over every little thing, like whether it's school project, whether it's just like bumping into someone in the hallway. She doesn't she doesn't understand that Erica has anxiety and that she needs like m like real support for this. She just Alexis just kind of like whatever just get over it it's life you know <laughs> and Erica doesn't she's not like that at all okay so let's take a look look at a clip and I think this is uh, Alexis and the counselor together that's it you're just going to force her to confide in you like before she said it didn't help her anymore she needs something that will it's very childish of you to undermine my authority <laughs> you're a crazy person go back to class Alexis and we are back. That was our clip. Wow. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about what it was like with a student director who also wrote it. Tell us about that a little bit. Um, well, our student director is a senior this year, and her name is Keely. And it was really great to have someone around our age to um, direct us and give us a better understanding of how to execute these characters, because a lot of these characters are students you'd see in school. So it was really helpful to have someone like her to tell us how she would like it executed to s have it more like a high school character rather than from an adult who doesn't really remember much or <laughs> <laughs> maybe doesn't remember much or has a different experience with high school. Yeah, and it was pretty fun and she gave us more freedom to kind of create to, our own yeah. characters. Yeah. Um, also, it's nice having somebody that we can talk to that's like on the same level as us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have like an like an adult, you don't want to like disrespect them in any way, so you don't necessarily speak your mind if you want to like change something. So it was nice having somebody um, that understands what we're going through because she's an actor as well. So she understands the creative process that goes into acting. So that really helped as well. Yeah, the writing process too. She let us help. Well, it was like from all of our writing, but she constructed the entire thing, which, which is really impressive. Ultimately yeah. hers. Yeah. And so she let us have our input into what goes um, into the script. I used in so many times. So, yeah, that was really cool because we got to put in what we wanted for our characters, and I'm really glad we were able to do that with her. So I, I think it's interesting that you all just mentioned that sometimes there are um, barriers when, you know, uh, an, an adult is trying to have a conversation with uh, a student who's in high school because their experiences are very different. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that clearly comes across in the show with the counselor's character, but I also noticed other than the counselor, um, there are no adults in this show. Um, mm -hmm. And I was wondering if that is, was intentional? You know, it, it seems like it, it leaves the students very much on their own. I think that we did that way. One, because we need a lot of people if we wanted more adults. <laughs> um, and also, it kind of shows how there's a disconnect between the different generations, at least. Not like all the time, but sometimes it's really just really hard to like speak your mind to anyone. Like it took a long time for Chloe to open up to the counselor. And when she did, it didn't, it helped her, but didn't necessarily actually help her, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think it, I, it was deliberate by, the, by Keely to write it that um, way. Yeah, Erica also mentioned in a part of, um, in one of her lines that, uh, when she was talking to Alexis, actually, we were on the phone and she was trying to help Erica, but she didn't understand. So Erica, she, Alexis suggested she talk to her parents, and Erica was like, my parents wouldn't understand. And I feel like that's something a lot of people can, are able to relate to because they, they think that like their parents are like, they don't think the same way that they do. They don't understand what's going on with them in high school. And so n none of the people in our cast or the characters, I don't think they would be people that would open up to their parents they like rely on like just peers yeah. for, for themselves especially with yours yeah, yeah. trying to cope with themselves 
cope with everything within themselves or mm-hmm. some friends. Especially with your character in the divorce. Uh, yeah, um, my character, Chloe Barrister, is trying to cope with the divorce with her parents, and she doesn't really know how to deal with it, so she goes out with her friend Samantha, and they go party and drink, and it puts a lot of strain with the relationship of her and her little sister, Sophie, and she just she's just trying to protect her because she doesn't want her to see her parents like that, and it made everything really hard to cope with how our parents were dealing with it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I think that this, this might be our final question, um, but you all have talked a lot about your characters, mm-hmm. and I'm curious um, for you all personally, how your experience with the theater, uh, this show in specific or, or just generally otherwise, um, how that's changed you as people. Samantha, like, she's a very different person like, from, from, from me, you. yeah. <laughs> um, she's very rude, like, to the way she talks to the counselor, that's, I would never do that, but I'm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> but I'm um, like I, I've learned a lot from her. Just kind of like how she deal, like how she, like her relationship with Chloe, it wasn't very good, even though she cared about her. So now I'm like I have to talk to my friends more and really understand them and help me with like my relationships with my friends and to be nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, just theater in general, it's kind of helped me, like, open up to people. And also, I've gotten a lot of good friends from theater. Because I've been acting since about kindergarten, probably. And I never, like, did big shows until middle school. And I like doing the one acts at our school because it allows you to work with a lot of different people you wouldn't necessarily work with on a daily basis. And also, you get to spend time with people with similar interests. Because I know we all enjoy acting a lot. And being able to be with like-minded people and people that understand your commitment to the theater is like really cool. Um, when I was in middle school, I didn't really, I, I wasn't really into acting. And then I saw the spring show and I was like, wow, that seems really cool. And I started meeting some of these people in theater and I felt like I fit in. I, I knew these people, I can relate to them. And before theater, I didn't really talk to people that much. And I never really opened up to anyone. And theater really helped out with that. So I found a lot of friends that I hope to still have for a while. (laughs) So I'm a pretty boring person. My life is boring. (laughs) So theater, um, I think it helps me a lot with um, expressing who I am. Because for every show, you're never playing the same person you were before. And you're never actually yourself. So it's cool to see what like I am as a person can bring into that character and also what that character can bring into like can show me as a person. And so theater has been like really cool to just letting me be who I am, just giving me new opportunities to like cuz theater's not just about acting, it's about like um, the tech that's a lot of work and then the building, the process of like building sets and then like working with lights, sound and just costumes, everything backstage. It's like, yeah, everything goes together. And so it's cool to learn that process as an actor. So you understand where everyone is. Great. Wow. Well, that's about all the time we have right now. Thank you, Trisha, Claire, Dolgan, and Maddie. We're going to take a look at another clip. This is This Is It from Falls Church High School. Sometimes, like I can feel seconds ticking by. I can feel myself getting older, and I can't remember anything productive I've done in the past 17 years. I'm sure the next 60 or 70 won't be any better. And we are back. Here we are again with some crew members from Falls Church High School. This is it. I have with me Nick Gum, running crew, and Stephanie Murphy, sound runner and sound designer. So, wow, Nick, you're next to me. How about you go first? Tell us a little about what you did in the show. So I was on Run Crew, and um, what I did was I helped move set pieces on and off the stage. Um, And there was uh, not that many um, set pieces as I'm used to in shows, but it was pretty fun being a part of the team. Cool, cool. And when you were moving things off, were you, how, what was the coordination like backstage? Were you in charge of, did you know when to do it? Were you taking cues from um, a stage manager well, or a I was, person? Well, um, 
as the stage manager Hope, um, I was taking um, some cues off of her because um, I hadn't really known this show as much as the other show that we did in an earlier theater competition because it changed. And um, so I, since we had this whole week off of school, I didn't really get that much time to rehearse with them, but I, it was pretty easy to learn because there weren't that many set changes. Okay, cool. And Stephanie, um, you both ran the sound and designed the sound, is that correct? Yes. Tell us, what is it like to do be the sound designer for a show? Well, I find it really interesting. It's probably my favorite part of tech. You have to learn how to incorporate the sound with what the script says, how to work it out, and then you also have to communicate with the director to find out what you both like and what you'd like to put into the show to help enhance it. What was that like? It was with Keely, was her name? Yes. What was that like collaborating with her? Were there any points at which you disagreed or were you surprised by some of her, her comments at some point? What was the collaboration like? Well, because of our lack of school the past couple of weeks, we mainly collaborated through text. And so what happened was I would go through the set, I would go through the script, think of sound cues that she may enjoy in the show, and I would communicate with her. We'd work something out, some things out. At one point, I did um, look through the script, and there I put in some sound cues that I thought would fit into the script. And when I communicated that with her, it was not supposed to be in the script. And it was as if the sounds were there, but you wouldn't be able to hear them. So you had to be able to imagine it yourself in the audience. Yeah, and we're talking about being outside of school. Uh, we sort of know what's been going on. There's been some snow. There's yeah. been a big, big blizzard. What is that like when the rehearsal process, and either one of you, when the rehearsal process is kind of interrupted and you have to just come right back into it? Um. Um, well, as tech members, we all communicated through social media. We texted each other so that we would understand what was going on, if we had any rehearsals that we had to attend. And for our cast, we know that they, they had to communicate themselves too. They ran over their scripts so that we wouldn't lose every single piece of information that we could remember for the show. So um, I got some emails from our theater teacher, and like she was like scheduling, and I tried to pass that information along because the, they might not get the email right away, or something might be they might be out somewhere. But then when they were back to their phone, I they saw the text pop up, and they saw like, oh, we don't have rehearsal today, or this show's moving to a different date, and all that, and what I need to help with, and yeah. So how many days were you out of school? Uh, about last, no wait, about 11-ish days. About a week, over a little, over a week and a half. So, so when did you do your most recent technical rehearsal with everything? Well, this was, we actually never had like a full dress rehearsal, but today was actually like my first day. I was just asked like whenever we had school last to do this, but um, we haven't really had like a test run but we had it like earlier today before, like in our, yeah. So basically you did your tech, you did your tech run today. Yes, yes and sir. And then ran it, wow, that is amazing. <laughs> Hats you. off to you guys, that is a <laughs> solid performance, it takes a solid technical crew to be able to pull that off, so yeah. wow. And we should also note for, for all of the performers here today, um, you all were supposed to, scheduled to do this last weekend, Yes. And it got canceled because of the snow. <laughs> yes. So you all uh, had to, you know, rearrange uh, your schedules, get everything back together, and, and perform it all this weekend. So um, that's a challenge that I know uh, all of our performers and tech crew today have, have been working with. Um, so I heard some of the actors this past week, they were using video chat and, like, running over their lines and stuff. That's excellent. So other than that, you all are on the tech crew, you're the, the part of the show that the audience doesn't generally get to see. Um, and so what are the, the biggest challenges that um, you're working to overcome that the audience might not know about if they don't know what life is like on the tech crew? Well, um, there's a lot of things that went on backstage that you should not know about. <laughs> but um, one of the challenges is, to, I'll say for instance today, I, I slipped on stage because I was running to help someone else and I slipped on a Lego and I was like, wow. And I fell, and that was one of the challenges for me because my ankle hurt for the rest of the show. <laughs> but other than that, I'd say it went pretty well. 
Good. No, I was feeling for you because you all were doing um, set changes in the dark. Yeah, right? it was yeah. really dark because it's not Pitch like dark. our theater. And we've practiced in our theater, but yeah. we've never practiced. Yeah, totally here. new space. Yeah. Totally in the dark. You've got Legos on stage, which oh, are yeah. just like tiny Correct. instruments of, of <laughs> danger. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, good work. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything to say about that? No, no. Did no, you have nothing any surprised challenges? you. Every, everything went according to plan. Did you have like new challenges in the booth well, with new equipment? Starting off with the show, when I first read through the script, I had about three sound cues. And as I continued to go over, I noticed there was more cues that maybe I could add in to incorporate and help mm -hmm. make the show better. And so I went from about three sound cues to 15, back to three, and then it would just go crazy. It would change up and down. And so you have to make adjustments in theater. You have to be able to cooperate with what's happening. And mm -hmm. so that wasn't as much of a struggle, but it would be kind of aggravating at some points when you'd have to go back and forth and readjust several things. Okay, well, about out of, we're about out of time, but just uh, one quick last question. Just both of you, you wonder, you at the beginning of your high school careers, if I understand correctly, yes. what are your plans for the rest of uh, the rest of your high school career? Well, theater like feels like it's like my happy place, and I really enjoy theater, and like especially tech, because um, I'm a little bit shy, but I mean like not really, but like it's different on stage. But I definitely love doing like technical part, especially because you get to meet like so many great people involved with the actors and like everybody fits in, whether you're an actor in tech and they all bond together and it feels really like family. Definitely, yeah. And you? Um, starting off my high school career for tech wise, I began off with the running crew and in my previous middle school years, I did different things uh, as a part of the crew. And so I do plan on continuing doing tech throughout high school. It's a great experience. You meet many people, as Nick said. You build a bond with people that you never expect that you would ever speak to, mm -hmm. and you become a, one big family, like Nick said. And coming from Falls Church High School, our school is very diverse. It has an amazing theater program. All our students cooperate, and we just work as one whole family. Wow. Well, that sounds... That's, that's a really great endorsement of Falls Church High School. And that's about all the time we have. We've been here today with Nick Gum and Stephanie Murphy and the rest of and some cast and cast members from the Falls Church High School production of This Is It. Thanks for tuning in. Wow, I can't drink anymore. Okay, first of all, why do you keep calling it drinking? You sound like a prohibitionist. And second of all, what? I really need to focus right now. Maybe I'll be able to start going out a lot in college or something, but right now I really need to do this. <sighs> You're gonna be so much less fun to hang out with now. <laughs> but of course I'll support you. You know I'm always here for you. Hey!